The Parable of the Dream When Monty was 16 years old, they asked him to write an essay about what he wants when he grows up. Monty suffered for a long time and spent many hours describing his dream. He wanted to be a rancher someday. He filled seven pages, describing in the smallest detail the 200-acre ranch and drew a plan of the location of all the buildings, stables and roads. He even drew a very detailed plan of the 4,000-square-foot house he would build. The next day, Monty gave his essay to the teacher. Two days later, his teacher returned the essay, putting a bold red 2, adding, stay after class. After the lesson, a boy with a dream approached the teacher and asked why he got a 2 for his essay. To which the teacher replied, because such a dream is impossible for a boy like you. You need a lot, a lot of money to buy such a ranch. And what kind of money do you have? No, you come from a very poor family. There is no way for you to fulfill your dream. It is not feasible. I'll tell you what. Go home and write another essay in which you describe a different, more realistic dream. And I'll give you a different grade. The boy returned home and asked his father for advice. And that's what he heard. Son, I'm afraid I'm not your assistant here. I think it should only be your decision. And I have a feeling that it will be a really important decision for you. Monty pondered his father's words for a week. Finally, he returned the same essay to the teacher and said, You can keep the two and I'll keep my dream. Time has passed. Monty graduated from school a long time ago, became an adult. He told this story and, turning to the group of people listening to him, said, I told you this story because you're all sitting in my 4,000 square foot house in the middle of my 200 acre ranch. And that essay is hanging in a frame over the fireplace. Monty continued. The most amazing part of this story is that two years ago, in the summer, the same teacher brought 30 students here, and they camped on my ranch for a week. Before leaving, the teacher told me, listen to Monty, I can tell you about this now. When I was your teacher, I was kind of a dream thief. I am very sorry now that I stole a lot of childhood dreams back then. But I am very glad that you found the courage to defend your dream. Don't let anyone steal your dream. No matter what they tell you, follow your heart. A beautiful parable about friendship. In the wolf pack, the old leader decided to appoint a successor. He approached the bravest and strongest wolf and said, I'm getting old, so I'm appointing you the new leader of the pack. But you have to prove that you are worthy. Therefore, take the best wolves, go hunting and get food for the whole pack. Good, said the new leader and left with six wolves to hunt and he was gone for a day and he was gone for the evening and when night came the pack saw seven wolves proudly carrying their food everyone was unharmed tell me how it was the old leader asked oh it was easy we were looking for prey and then we saw ten hunters coming from hunting with prey we attacked them tore them to shreds, and took the loot for ourselves. Well done, you'll go again tomorrow. The next day, six wolves and a new leader went hunting again. And they were gone for a day. And evening. And the night. 
and morning. And only in the afternoon one exhausted wolf appeared on the horizon. It was a new leader, covered in blood, with tattered fur, lame and barely alive. What happened? The old leader asked. We went far into the forest and searched for prey for a long time and saw three hunters coming from hunting with prey. We attacked them, but they were stronger than us. They killed all my warriors, I somehow managed to escape. But how so? The old leader was surprised. Yesterday you easily defeated ten hunters, and today you could not cope with three. Yes, but yesterday it was just a group of ten hunters, and today it was three best friends. The Parable Shoulder to Shoulder In a remote land lived a white fang and if he howled, everyone was scared. But time passed and a hoarse cry escaped from the mouth one day. He suddenly realized, humbling the trembling, the fangs are dull and the claws are erased, that the pack needs a new leader ready to lead the cohort into battle. Having sent his son for himself, he remained lying in a quiet paddy. The passage of days without haste, living only for the sake of hope, that his flair and valuable experience will be useful to the young hits the carbine without misfiring and does not leave without knowing the path. The youngest leader of the wolves led, by morning they returned with the loot, came to his father like Svitopolk, said that the blood was drunk. We chased a moose through the taiga and stumbled upon hunters, tearing one by one in a drunken blizzard and returned whole. Again a day later they went into darkness, the victory was easy beckoning. The leader barely crawled alive, two wolves with him, the other grave. The wounds were burning, do not touch, I came to my father. Tell the wisest. There was just a frenzied fire, but there were three times fewer people. When they saw us, they pressed shoulder to shoulder defended themselves, then drove across the virgin land, laughing at the gray speed. No, there is no strength stronger than friendship. I heard a wise legend. Everything else is a ricochet and even a hit. The leader has a difficult path and get ready for each sortie. Do not worry. There is a crowd with guns but be afraid of meeting with friends. A parable about friendship, which tells about two friends walking in the desert. One day they argued and one of them slapped the other. The latter, feeling pain, but saying nothing, wrote in the sand. Today my very best friend slapped me in the face. They continued walking and found an oasis in which they decided to swim. The one who got slapped almost drowned, and his friend saved him. When he came to, he wrote on the stone. Today my best friend saved my life. The one who slapped and who saved his friend's life asked him. When I offended you, you wrote in the sand, and now you write on the stone. Why? The friend replied. When someone offends us, we have to write it in the sand so that the winds can erase it. But when someone does something good, we have to engrave it in stone so that no wind can erase it. Learn to write grievances in the sand and engrave joys on stone. 